Come on, Jeep. Come on, keep it going. Tommy, what the heck you wearing? Well, it's 80s day here at TFL. It's actually 80s off-road day. You know, anybody can take a brand new vehicle off-road, but it's pretty cool when you can take two classic vehicles off-road. Yeah, I think my vehicle's more rust than classic at this point. But a 10-year-old vehicle, right? That's old. A 20-year-old yeah. vehicle, that's very old. But a 30-year-old vehicles, now that is classic. I'm not so sure about that, but today on the TFL Cheap Jeep Pickup Challenge, we're taking uh, 87 Samurai and our 88 Comanche of Pennsylvania Gulch. Yeah, we're gonna find out what it was like off-roading in the good old days. And it's probably the, um, the perfect truck ever. Now Jeep took the best parts of the Cherokee, the comfort and the refinement, and added on a lot of usability out back. But it just does everything pretty well. And when you combine all those pretty wells into one package, kind of becomes a really well situation. This truck started out as a late 80s Comanche, but since then, as you can tell, as part of the series, we've upgraded it a little bit. First of all, we gave it a three and a half inch lift, thanks to our friends at Terraflex. So it does have relatively modern suspension, Falcon shocks. Then we kept the original wheels, but added some much beefier and much bigger 33 KM3s to give it a little bit more bite. In fact, it's got a little bit too much tire right now because, well, quite frankly, we need better bump stops because it will rub and it will hit. But besides that, the vehicle is basically stuck. Back in the day, if you wanted to go off-roading, you needed something like a pickup truck like this Comanche or a Suzuki Samurai to do it. In those days, most vehicles weren't four-wheel drive, let alone all-wheel drive. And so it was quite unusual to have a vehicle that was capable of going off-road. Today, of course, off-roading has become a thing, and everything from Subarus to uh, RAV4s have adventure built into their DNA. All you do is let the vehicle decide where it should send the power and the torque, and away you go. But in the 80s, you didn't know how to operate a four-wheel drive vehicle. Now with Tommy's Suzuki, of course, you have to manually lock the front hubs. With this Jeep, not so much. You just put it in four low, and away you go. Okay, so this is a bone stock 1987 Suzuki Samurai. Well, bone stock, except for one thing. We've got a set of Yokohama Geolander all-terrain tires on this beast. Now, I do call it a beast because even stock, these tiny little Jeeps are incredible off-road. Solid axles, a real low-range transfer case, and a proper ladder frame. I don't have a lot of power, but I don't really need it. Hey, I take offense. That's a Jeep. This is a Samurai, dude. Yeah, but everywhere else in the world, this is basically the Jeep. No, Nico, no, 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 no. A Jeep has a long American heritage of off-roading going back to the very first Jeep. Is it a soft top? Yes. Does it have a tower, tire in the butt? Yes. Is it four-wheel drive? Yes. Does it have a solid axle? Yes. Is it a convertible? Yes. It's a Jeep. No, they just copied the Jeep. That's all that happened. They improved on the Jeep they, is what they did. They copied it. They, 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 they made a reliable, plucky, better Jeep. This is basically a Willys, except it'll start every time. Oh my my, and the rust of course is also adding to the character. Yeah. So who's going first? The question is, who's more likely to get stuck? Um... I, I could pull you with the Comanche, you're not going to pull me with the Suzuki. Yeah, but you're more likely to get stuck. I am, but are you going to pull this truck with that guy? Yeah, with like a mile head run. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. Uh, let's leave the Land Rover down here. Okay. And if anybody needs pulling, we'll, we'll come get it. Okay, so who wants to go first? Uh, why don't you go first, bounding up those little... Okay, yeah, that right. sounds good. Alright, you go first, I'll go second. Yeah. So here's why you buy a Suzuki Samurai. I'm coming up to this little obstacle, and it is so narrow, I can just drive around the big scary rock. And how about that? How about that? I mean, it's so narrow, it's basically the width of a side-by-side. Under the hood is one of the best engines the Jeep has ever put under the hood of a vehicle. 
and that is of course a four liter straight six. In fact, it's probably one of the best engines ever built for any vehicle, not just a Jeep. In its day, it was incredibly powerful, about 170 horsepower and over 200 pound foot of torque. The only issue, and this is a big issue, is that they shoehorn this bad boy in here and as you can tell, there's not a lot of room. Basically, there's not a lot of room for the heat to escape and so these do have a tendency to overheat and 30 years later, that tendency has gotten worse. So my biggest fear is not having enough torque, but it's simply overheating this straight six. So I'm gonna have to be careful and watch my temperature cage like a hawk. So uh, let's see how this bad boy does. So I'm at about 150 degrees right now, which is uh, okay. It starts to get in the red at about 200 and I'm gonna say 30-ish. And then of course at 260, it's too hot. So do you wish you had an automatic now that you're rolling back into me? Not even a little bit because this five-speed manual is super precise and it's actually really easy to modulate because the car doesn't weigh anything. Yeah, you know, I like automatics off-road better, but there's something pure and cool about having the old five-speed. Uh, so at least in that regard, we're both on the same page, right? Okay, come on, Samurai. Bouncy. All right, I'm scrambling up this. Wish me luck. Damn, I'm already stuck. Exactly what I was afraid of. All right, I'm gonna try it with a little bit of momentum. Here we go. Point three liter four cylinder under the hood of the Samurai. Now the big difference between this and the Comanche is that this is carbureted, uh, which is not ideal at 8,000 feet above sea level when you're going up, you know, 20, 30 percent grades. Um, but what is great about it is it runs like an absolute top, and it doesn't need a lot of power. It only has 60, 70 horsepower because it doesn't weigh anything. Under 2,000 pounds is what the Samurai weighs all in, and I don't really weigh anything either. So all in all, it's a super light setup, not a lot of power, but you don't really need it. For a little behind the scenes, you guys may be wondering what's our recovery rig, and that of course is Landy, and Landy's become kind of like a golden retriever. We just fell in love with this vehicle, and I don't think we're ever gonna sell it. Now, of course, it has all the modern stuff that you'd want when going off-roading, so not only is it lifted with good tires, of course, this is a 2004, and you're up, what, 20 years in technology when you get to this vehicle, so we use it with a lot of relish for our recovery rig. The only downside is Tommy went camping and put on this 100 pound tent and now the thing is really top heavy. And for all you guys out there doing overlanding, I know it looks cool to have all your stuff on top of the vehicle, but it's not good. It raises the center of gravity and when you're actually doing some serious off-roading, it makes it super tippy and a little butt clenchy. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm impressed with that Suzuki. Well, I mean, I don't know if there's a lot to be impressed with because these are legendary for their off-road capability. I mean, it's kind of what you expect out of a... Out of the Samurai. It just scrambles over everything, like it doesn't care. It feels like a, um, well, like a, like a toy, but we got a pretty hard obstacle up here, so um, I, I, I'm a little worried about this. Well, if you're worried about it, then I'm terrified. It's super rocky. Um, which normally I'd be worried about because I don't have all that much ground clearance whatsoever. Oh. 
that. Oh, that hurt. It was not comfortable. Well, we're up to, uh, I don't know, 220 ish. Let me show you. Could be worse. Could be 230, 240 in the red. I'm just gonna use momentum. That's all I got. Momentum and 30 year old technology. Isn't that funny? Comanche, the pioneer version of the Comanche. Get it? Pioneer, Comanche, cowboys and Indians. What were they thinking back in the 80s? Jeep or was it AMC back then? What were you guys thinking? Uh, the thing about classic vehicles is they're well classic and at the same time I have too much and not enough suspension travel. And that may sound contradictory but it's actually true so the reason I don't have enough is because we've got these tall tires, which means that they tend to hit and scrape. The reason I have too much is because we have these tall tires, which means they tend to hit and scrape. So I'm gonna air down because I need as much traction as I can here. So right now I'm at about 35, and I'm gonna take these mud terrains down to about 20. So we've got these little devices that actually are supposed to allow you to be able to automatically take it down to 20 pounds. The whole point of these is you use this big outer knob to set how far you want the tire to deflate and then you lock it with this little inner ring so it doesn't move and then once you hit be it 20, 25, it'll stop altogether and you just pull them off. But how do you know how many PSI that is? We have to test them. Uh, so are you going to air down? No. No? Why not? Because um, I don't need to because it's so light um, and any additional ground clearance I can get the better because it doesn't have a lot to begin with. There we go. Look at that. Oh, that didn't work. I think that's wrong. I think you turned it too much. I did turn it too much. I think I, I think I set it to like zero by accident. Uh, so uh, yeah, we. Uh, we didn't quite get it right first time. These things do work really well. So that tire is at 12, this one's at 8, and the other two are at 18. So we want to be about 15 to 18, so this one's way too low, that one's way too low. Luckily, we've got our recovery rig with onboard air. Tommy's bringing it over right now. By the way, if you guys are thinking about um, upgrading your vehicle, I would highly suggest getting an onboard air compressor. It really is probably the most useful thing you can have when off-roading. And I just plug it in like that, and it's um, it's probably like 20 feet long. It's pretty long, and I just clip it on like that, and. Okay, so the cool thing is, is when I unplug it, the air compressor will actually stop. It knows uh, what pressure is built up in the hose. And this is actually the dual ARB air compressor, so it's quite expensive, but it fills things up super fast. So that's just been a few, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 seconds, and we're all the way up to 24. So we're back to the right air pressure in the Comanche. I'll put these away. Why don't you show them what we carry in our recovery rig? Um, so essentially what we have is a recovery kit minus the hat, so you know, we've got uh, tree savers, straps, D-rings, all that fun stuff. A uh, ladder for the tent. We have a uh, big battery booster for charging cameras. Um, lots of fluids and oils and stuff because it's a Land Rover thing. This is my favorite thing. Where is it here? Oh, here it is. This is my favorite thing. Bear beware. <laughs> We're prepared. Of course, this not only serves as a, a great safety feature, right? Mm -hmm. But there's matches in there. Oh, cool. Yeah, so.
Tommy, we got one more hard part and then we're through this. I think it's a good thing you get a soft top because otherwise your head would be <laughs> bouncing off the roof. <laughs> the only saving grace yeah. is that it's narrow enough where like you can avoid some of the really bad stuff. Yeah, but you know what? I try to avoid it and the thing rears up and you end up on them anyway. It's gotten harder this year. Yeah, way harder. Way harder, yeah. Or maybe it's just that we're in 80s vehicles and it seems harder. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. All right, let's finish this up. Okay, here we go. This is the V-notch. You can see it goes whoop. And that's not so great on the Samurai because I don't actually have the whip here, the one time I need to be wide to straddle it. A lot of throttle. There we go. Ooh, there's that open dip. Whoa, that's pretty tippy. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a different approach, I think, here. Which is speed. My grip, 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 grip. Ooh, almost just took out the door. Just have to stay in it. What the hell am I gonna do here? I don't know. I don't think I have the clearance. Oh well. Okay, we're through. Oh man, that was awful. That was really terrible. Oh man, and we're at the top and now I'm stuck again. And I can't modulate the brake. There we go. It's starting to smell a little funny now. Okay, we're up. All right, here we go. I'm a little nervous. But now I'm going, I'm okay. Just momentum. was hairy, but fun! <laughs> Woo! Comanche! All right, a quick equipment check. Nothing broke. I think the key, Tommy, was that uh, these mud terrains are just uh, unstoppable. Plus, of course, uh, the TerraFlex lift gave it enough ground clearance to just get up and over that trail. I think there's two things we need to get done though relatively quickly. The offset on this rear set of wheels is wrong. It just looks funny so we have to fix it with a spacer. Uh, and of course um, I want to get the air conditioning working. It's getting hot. It's going to be summertime. And then finally if we can find that sports bar uh, this project will be complete. Tommy what's the scoop on the uh, Suzuki? Yeah I actually made it out um, really super unscathed. I certainly scraped the heck out of the bottom of my hitch there a little bit. Um, that's to be expected, but actually the, the gas tank has a little skid plate on it, so um, didn't damage the fuel tank, which I was really worried about. <laughs> actually, look at this. So I did run into that uh, that mud wall here with the side of the bumper. Not a huge deal there. And check this out, actually. I, I actually used the bull bar to my advantage, so rather than taking out the bodywork, I put a little, little dent in the, the bar there. Hey, you know what? Since we're almost done with that series, right, or this series that you're watching, why don't you do a... A classic series on the Suzuki. Let's build it up. Let's you know, throw in some uh, more off-road tech. Well, that's actually the plan. So it's over on TFL Classics. Link to that channel in the description below. But the plan is, it's a real cheap Jeep series. Cheap Jeep-ish, because it's a Samurai. But the idea is we bought this for $2,400. I'm going to put $1,500 into it to see how good we can make it off-road for four grand total. And you know what we can do? At the end of the summer, once you do it, let's take a back up Pennsylvania and see how much improvement it has. All right, dude. Well, thank you guys for watching. And remember, come back again for another episode of the TFL Jeep Jeep Pickup Challenge. And I thought we were going to use this trail a lot this year, but after this, with manufactured vehicles, oh.